Greetings from the beautiful land of Zimbabwe in Southern Africa. I'm making this video for you because you are a science educator, I am a science communicator, and I would love to help you educate your students, particularly in the field of biological sciences, botany, and ethnobotany. Hi folks, my name is Gus Le Breton. Uh, people call me the African plant hunter. I'm not really a plant hunter as such. It's a social media term, but it does attract attention. I've actually spent the last 30 years of my life working here in Zimbabwe and all over Southern Africa in the field of ethnobotany, commercializing indigenous plants for uh, the benefit of rural people. Just a little bit of my educational background. I studied social anthropology way back in the 1980s uh, at Cambridge University in the UK. And then uh, a few years later, I studied uh, for the Masters in Environmental Management, focusing on social ecology at the Yale School of Forestry in the US. I have recently ventured more full-time into science communication and it's something I love to do, and it's something that I believe could be of great assistance to uh, many science educators out there, and that's what I'm here to talk to you about today. I can make videos for you, directly for you, for your students, on a wide range of topics, particularly focusing around botany and ethnobotany. Examples, let's say, a description of the botanical characteristics of a particular plant species. Top is quite dark green underneath, much lighter, and then you see these very distinctive yellow veins that stick out uh, along the underside of the leaf. Maybe a plant family, uh, more at the taxonomic level. Uh, examples of the ethnobotanic uses of a plant or a group of plants and of course here I have the opportunity to actually show you those ethnobotanic uses in action here with rural people in southern Africa. Shinzia Phyton Rautaneni, this is a beautiful nut from the Kalahari region. Perhaps the traditional medicinal uses, the phytochemistry of a particular plant or a group of plants. That's something I've done quite a lot of in the past. Culture scene has many wonderful healing properties, but like many good things, it can also, if you take too much of it, kill you. I can also make uh, videos on a broader range of biodiversity and conservation related topics. So I've been in the conservation field for a long time in Southern Africa. I know many of the players, I know many of the issues. Uh, I can get first-hand access, uh, genuine and authentic coverage. For example, topics like human-wildlife conflict, protected areas, buffer zones. There's a wide range of topics that I can cover with an African spin that perhaps your students wouldn't otherwise be able to see. Every video I make is made in simple, clear, plain English. Um, I'm good at distilling complex concepts into simple language. If that tree provides them with a commercial income from the sale of the fruit, then they will look after it. Usually injected with a little bit of humor and a very informal tone. If you need subtitling in another language, I can also arrange that. My videos can be made to any length you desire. In any format you desire, I can incorporate, of course, your branding, uh, speak specifically to your students. And everything is done in a very authentic and genuine way, set against some of the magnificent African landscapes that uh, probably most of your students have never seen before. Guaranteed to keep them interested, entertained and enthused throughout. So if this sounds like it might be of interest to you, please do have a look at my YouTube channel, uh, African Plant Hunter. There's plenty more on there. And if you want to talk about the potential for making videos directly for you, just give me a shout. Oh, just write to me, gus at africanplanthunter.com and we can talk. All right, guys, I hope you've enjoyed this very short summary of what I would like to offer you as a science educator and I look forward to meeting you again somewhere. I will catch you later. Take it easy. Bye.